Yo guys, Remy here, uh, just out in Squamish with uh, Miranda. Since we're not racing anymore, I figured this would be a pretty good opportunity to uh, start a vlog. So welcome to episode one of the vlog. Oh look, I think someone's coming down the hill here. Oh, is that Paul? Ooh. Mm. We gotta help that guy, Miranda. Big time. Punters, welcome, hope you are well. Hope you're having a great day. I'm having a great day because I'm in hometown woods of Squamish with two, let me frame it. Oh, look at that, that's framing. Two expert mountain bikers. Here we have world champion downhill racer, Miranda Miller and uh, Remy Govan, he also races. Can I get a uh, large double-double? So today, I want these guys to help me out my posture because it's like something really important with mountain biking and I haven't got it nailed at all. And these two will know what they're talking about. Now, social distancing is in effect if you somehow didn't already know. I have my own camera. These media moguls over here have their own camera as well. So we're not gonna be swapping the camera. We're just gonna figure it out at the end. It should be easy, hopefully. What do you want me to do first? I guess, do you wanna see, see me ride? See where the starting point is? Yeah, we gotta see what we're working with. Hmm, what do you think about that, Miranda? Mm, my first thought is a little stiff. So I definitely think that uh, we have some things we can work on with Paul here. Do you, want another, do you want another one? Yeah. Yeah, we need one more. This might be tougher than we anticipated, Miranda. Damn, gap out. He's just maintaining like this position. Couple runs down. Team, what are you saying? I think the first uh, thing that we notice is you're just kind of a little bit of a hunchback, so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what I was saying, Paul, is like, it just seems like you have a position, but then you don't move from that position. You have like your attack position or whatever. Hunchback. But you're, you have your attack hunchback, <laughs> torpedo, but then you don't like allow your body position to change as the terrain changes. I think I can feel that. You're just like doing that attack position the whole time. <laughs> Do you want me to be honest? I thought that was what you were meant to do. <laughs> no, I'm not even kidding. Well, it well, it's is. Part of it but it like... is. You're supposed to be in an attack position and hold that position, but when your attack position looks like yours, <laughs> maybe we need to work on a few things. <laughs> you also have to allow, like, to be able to move, like, with the trail a bit, you know? Like, not just, like... <laughs> yeah. Well, how about one of you show me you riding through here, and the other one point out what the other one is doing. I'll go for a quick pedal. Like a casual 8 out of 10, you know? Ooh, ho, 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 ho. Pardon? Most noticeable difference was like, Remy has like his set positions, so like his hips and maybe like his shoulders, but then he's, he's allowing like his knees to bend more and his elbows to like do smaller like micro movements. I think the whole thing with like a good attack position is that you're in a powerful position, but it's a position where nothing is locked. Your back is strong, but legs and arms are able to move, and your uh, hips are able to move. So you're saying that everything on me is locked, when really it should just kind yeah. of be the torso. When, is that fair? So you're hinged at the hips, so then you're, it's like your hips and your glutes are like engaged and they're strong. Yeah. And like your legs are strong, but then your ankles and your knees, you know, you have micro movements in them. They're not like, just like set like this. So I'm honestly not sure Paul heard a word that we've been talking about this entire time. <laughs> Too much to think about. Let's do one thing. Let's break time. it down here. Because I was like, oh, hips, oh, hands, oh, push, push in. <laughs> this time we've told him just to un unlock his hips and to uh, include, engage, include his glutes. Unlock his hips and engage his glutes. What do you think, Miranda? I think that was his best one so far. Do you know what like an engaged glute feels like? Like if you're about to do a deadlift, that kind of feeling. Yeah, yeah like not... actually how to like fire them and like. I just felt like I was doing it. I didn't feel like anything yeah. was engaged. Cause you know, when, when I like go like that, like engaged and like oh. strong, you know? So, but like, but like when you're in riding that position, do you feel strong or are you just like bending at the waist? I think I'm just going. You're just sticking your butt out. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm just doing that. Okay. So there, that's like maybe step one. Step two would be making that position like powerful. Step one, push butt out. Step two, actually use said butt. Butt's big muscle, use big muscle butt to bike. Engage the glutes.
Honestly, he's getting a lot faster. Miranda, he used his muscles. He's got muscles. <laughs> he has muscles and now he learned to use them. That was really good. B but? <laughs> but he was focusing so much on using his lower body, he forgot to use his upper body. <laughs> <laughs> that I felt. You were look, looking so really bad. good and then there it's like you went off and like your legs were good but then it's like you totally just forgot to use your <laughs> upper body. I felt like a pretty different rider. I mean, seriously, when I was coming down here, I was just like, wow, this is what being balanced on a mountain bike feels like. And it looked like your fastest one. Like what that engagement feels like. That's like the same feeling I have like when I ride. And so like sometimes before I ride, I just do a couple of those. It's like turning it on kind of, you're like, that's kind of, yeah, activating it. So basically I'm just trying to keep my hips unlocked, butt pointed, shoulders back, allow the bike to move from there. Hey, do, you, do you do the same thing? For me right now, actually, I, because these turns are a little bit awkward, trying to find, put myself in a position where I feel like I have like a good amount of weight pushing through my feet and in my hands. I try and think to do that. That's something I struggle with, pushing down on everything. Maybe like too, noticing when you ride, like your ankles are a bit locked as well. So maybe that- Ankles. So drop, drop them. I don't, I don't know if you need to drop them more. I can't remember, but like they didn't seem to like move much. To be able to like load into your feet. Supple suspension, even suppler ankles. <laughs> suppler? <laughs> Is that a word? Plush suspension, plush your ankles. Let's have a recap on this first point. They want me to actively engage my glutes while riding to give me a stronger position on the bike, and this allows me to unlock more power while riding, meaning I'll be able to push through my hands and feet for better grip. Now, punters, I've got to tell you that my XT brakes have never felt so good, and all I did was the smallest amount get bent. The smallest amount of maintenance. I just bled them, and I sandpapered off the glaze that was on my pads, and then I feel incredible. Like, look. Amazing. The next part was to now use this better position to smooth out the trail by moving my arms and legs more efficiently. And then I was doing it. And then I was like, whoa, I'm doing it. And then I went through those turns really good. I could see it. Oh, it's coming together. I could actually see Paul doing what we told him to do. So that was pretty cool. World's first, Paul does what he's told. Definitely seeing flashes of brilliance from Paul the Punter right now. Also some flashes of sketchiness, but uh... Happens to all of us. Yeah, happens, exactly. You were able to like shift direction yeah. with your body along with your bike kind of thing. Like you were going this way and then you're able to like, you unweighted and then you like turned into the next turn, which was pretty cool. By being more active with my body, I should be able to create more stability and better bike control. I use my legs to like push in to get traction to like settle myself off that thing. So you're saying you're not like preloading, you're pushing into the ground. You're not like bouncing, pushing. Yeah, exactly. It's almost like you're pushing into the ground to stop it from like pushing me up and then being unsettled. There's like an abrupt change of terrain. So you have to push into this hole. Even when I did my little squiggle around, I definitely Feel like you gotta push in here and then push into here again. So when you're riding and you're in that position that I was saying that I noticed in you when you're riding down, you would just take that hit like through the legs and then you would kind of just like bump. Yep. Oh, okay. Whereas this, you're like pushing against that hit to mm -hmm. keep yourself on the ground. You're not absorbing it, you're resisting against it. You're filling it. Yeah. You're filling the hole. <laughs> you're filling the hole. <laughs> it's like very hard to like teach because I think it's something you learn. You just have to learn by feel like, cause you can't be like, okay, that hole, that hole, that hole. Like, okay, yeah, you know, yeah. like you have to like, it's like the rhythm of the trail kind of. Well, if you just imagine Anything. your head trying to track a straight line, but your legs and arms trying to fill the train, each hole that the train That's provides, it. right? Like you want your head and shoulders to- Be stable. To be stable and smooth, but but in order to do that, you have to push into the train with your arms and legs. The point that I'm trying to make is like, don't be afraid to almost like push back against the train. I feel like that's like a big difference between an intermediate and like an expert rider is the ability to read the train, use it to their advantage. And a lot of that is being in a good body position. When you just push away from it, like that's when things get bad. That's when you start to lose traction and stuff. When you, when you raise your body or when you extend your arms fully, in a section that you're uncomfortable with because all of a sudden your center of gravity isn't in a good spot anymore. It's just like you've, you've jacked your, your riding position.
You know what, guys? I don't care what they say about this Paul guy. He's not all that bad at biking. He just needs the right coaching. I'm only gonna do pro coaching videos with female world riders now. <laughs> Cause they know all the best tricks. The hell? I'm right here, man. For a while, I've been struggling to get that balance between pressure on the front and pressure on the rear of the bike. And already in just a couple of goes, of actively engaging my glutes, it felt a lot easier. And I noticed that in the turns, I could actually push through my hands and feet and get that extra grip. But there is still one thing we can't solve in today's session. Your lower body is starting to look better. Yeah. It's making like your shoulders look really bad. Like that oh, hunchback. This it's is like, not gonna be it's soft. almost like yeah. exaggerating how stiff your upper, you're like that like, I guess you said your thoracic, thoracic yeah, is like super stiff. Now it's like highlighting how stiff your upper body is. Every office person <laughs> watching this is gonna relate super hard. This is like, this is years of driving in a car, working in an office. Classic do, punter things. Just gotta do more yoga with Adrian. That's the secret. At the beginning, it was like a few smaller things, but now that you're kind of like working those into it. But is there anything I can try to do to combat this tight chest of mine? Can you not just like, I feel like you're, you're just riding like this and then your head's like twisted. Your shoulders are kind of like set, pulled down, and then it opens up your chest to move around. Look, you can like lean the bike, you can absorb things. What if I do that now? What if I go like this? and then drop in. He's got a stiff neck, and we don't know what we can do about it at this point. You started, you started riding, and you're like, really, like, you're like this. Cause I tried so hard. And, and then as soon as you got into something technical, there was like a moment in between that was good, yeah. and then you went back into like your hunch. So like, you gotta find that like in between. You, Cause you started like splayed out. Here was like pretty good, and then by the time you like got here, you're like back to like. Looks like I've got a lot of foam rolling and stretching in my future. But then I tried following Miranda for a bit, and it was hilarious how much of a gap she could make on me in no time at all. So Miranda followed me instead to try and spot some final posture points, and she noticed that my hips were locked over the top of my bike. Again, not being active enough. Remy then had a go at following me, and he could also see this straight away. I definitely agree with Miranda and that your hips are like locked to right over the top of the frame. Your hips go to the right, so the fact that they're at least over the bike and not oh, on the right is yeah. a good starting point. Okay. They just need to move a bit farther left yeah, on I a right-hander. When we did RV, I was definitely, I would do. Yeah, yeah, I remember like your, your hips would tip into the direction you're cornering, which is like the opposite thing you want to do. So, I don't know, we're halfway there. So maybe something simple like cone drills would help. I did just buy some canes, Miranda. <laughs> well, punters, lots of tips in there. Miranda, Remy, thank you so much. I'm gonna go away and practice this. Maybe do a cones video next time. Probably that's what I'm gonna do. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, and if you haven't already, hit subscribe, and cheers, punters. I'll see you next time.